Good morning, and thanks for viewing. Today's Tuesday tip is on revocable and non-revocable trust assets. The affordable housing residents are not the same as residents of old, 10 to 20 years ago. Most are baby boomers that are savvier, more educated, and have a different financial autonomy. Because of these things they formerly didn't encounter, we now encounter. It's hard for a manager to explain something to these residents by just saying, because the book says so, or by saying, because HUD says so, without giving them a reasonable explanation to help them understand the process that you're doing. Let's look at the two types of trust. They're explained in the HUD Handbook 4350.3, Chapter 5. It's important to note that both trusts are living trusts, so named because they were created while the person, called the grantor, was still alive. A revocable living trust is a type of trust that can be changed at any time if the grantor has second thoughts about a provision in the trust, or if he or she has a change of mind about who should be a beneficiary of the trust. The entire trust can be revoked or undone if they decide that they just it just doesn't serve their, serve their purposes anymore. Whereas a non-revocable or often called an irrevocable trust, on the other hand, is just as it sounds, not revocable. A non-revocable trust is simply a type of trust that can't be changed by the grantor after the agreement has been signed and the trust has been formed and funded. For the most part, that trust is forever. The property or value can't be taken back that was put in place in the beginning. A person can't act as grantor and trustee and manage the trust either. The grantor may not change the beneficiary, alter any of the terms of the trust, or revoke it. The trust is formed and the grantor's steps are there forever. I received a call from a resident that wanted to know why her manager wanted to accept her irrevocable or non-revocable trust as an asset. She says, I just don't understand why she wants to count this as an asset against me when I have no control over it. I have nothing to do with it at all. The benefits will go straight to the funeral home to pay for my final expenses. It belongs to the funeral home, not to me. They are often called the owner because it's paid directly to the funeral home. The resident really and truly just didn't understand. She went on to say that the only explanation that the manager gave her was because the book says so. And Miss Bell, that's just not good enough for me. Well, the intent of today's tip is to help you explain how owning a trust affects the assets of your residents and perhaps how you can explain to them what a trust does or does not do for them. I started out by telling the caller, which was a resident, that the trust was considered an asset because it was a monetary, it has monetary value and had been set up with assets or personal real property that belonged to her. She seemed to kind of understand that a little bit better. I then asked her if she had access to either the principal or income, monthly or annual, of the trust currently. Some trusts make income or principal available to the grantor or family members. She said no. Her answer was no. If anything is paid, it goes back into the trust, she said. But she also stated that she's never known anything to have been paid. Well, Chapter 5, Paragraph 57G 
of the 4350 deals with trust and how to calculate the income from the asset. Section G1B3 of that paragraph on non-revocable trust states, if no family member has access to either the principal or income of the trust at the current time, the trust is not included in the calculation of income from assets or annual income. So as managers, you first need to determine what type of trust it is. Secondly, if it's a non-revocable trust, if the resident has current access to the trust, is receiving income from the trust, or can do anything with the principal, then you can count it toward the income and the asset calculations. But if the resident does not have, currently does not have or receive any income from the principal, has nothing to do with the trust, the handbook says that you cannot count it as income. Hopefully this tip helps someone understand trust and how to view them. Until next Tuesday, farewell. Did you like this video? Hit the like button below. Do you want to see more content just like this? Be sure to subscribe to all our social media platforms. And if you know someone who could really use this information, be sure to share it.